Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is incredible or the afternoon or evening whenever you happen to be watching. Have you ever thought about keeping reptiles as some pets? Or do you have a bunch of reptiles? I don't know, I'm just gonna give you the seven things that you should know if you really wanna keep reptiles as pets. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. I know this may come as a surprise to some of you, but believe it or not, reptiles are animals. <laughs> That's right, beyond popular belief, reptiles are still animals. And listen, you may think it's funny that I just said that, but I honestly believe that there's a large part of the population that doesn't even really consider reptiles animals. I mean, they know they're animals, but they don't think of them as like dogs and cats or emotional or able to be trained or be companions. They just think of them as kind of like, almost like a nuisance. Well, the truth is, is if you're thinking about getting a reptile, think about it, they really are animals. They deserve the same respect, the care, the love, the attention that a dog or cat does. Now, of course, they are a little bit easier to care for, right? And that's one of the big advantages of reptiles and why reptiles have probably really gained popularity over the last 20, 25 years, which brings me to my second point, which of course is pick the right reptile for you. And what I basically mean by that is one of the reasons why reptiles have gained in popularity so much over the last quarter of a century has been that our lifestyle is fast, right? And of course, dogs and cats are amazing. We have dogs, I love all animals, you guys know that. But the truth is they do require daily care. You gotta walk them, you gotta put them outside, you gotta feed them and all that other stuff. Well, some reptiles you don't need to have daily care. So pick the right reptile for you. For instance, if you travel a lot or you have a really busy life where you're not home that much, a snake is probably a great option. And the reason for that is most snakes typically eat you know, every seven to 10 days. Uh, you can just put fresh water in with them and they don't really need it. You can take them out as much as you want, but you don't have to. So if you were gonna go out of town for four days or something like that, you don't have to get anyone to come in and actually babysit your snake. You could just make sure that the temperatures are right, the timers are set on the heat or whatever the case may be. Make sure that it was fed before you leave. Make sure it has good fresh water. And really four or five days, it's gonna be completely fine. Obviously you can't do that when it comes to a mammal, right? So that's one of the reasons why keeping a snake, if you have a really fast paced life where you're not gonna be around a lot, might be a great option for a pet. Now, if you're home all the time, you can still keep a snake. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. But if you want something that needs more daily care, you like the fact that every day you've gotta do something, water, spray, whatever the case may be, uh, a lizard is a great option. You know, these lychee geckos are incredible, right? They're the largest gecko species. But of course, there's leopard geckos, there's crested geckos, there's iguanas. There's, I mean, the lizard list goes on and on and on. And most of them do require daily care. You know, these guys, you've gotta put either Apache or Pangea or whatever every single day. You've gotta spray them once or twice a day. You've gotta make sure they have fresh water. So again, a lizard could be a great option for you if you're someone that does wanna have an animal that has a lot of care. But let's say that you're allergic to dogs and cats, right? Well, you can have that daily care with something like Reptar here and still get the kind of emotional animal that you can work with every single day without the allergic part of it. Or if maybe you're just not a dog and cat person and you're like, I want a reptile, but I want to be a caretaker and I want to mess with it every single day. Point number three is setup is everything. Unlike a lot of pets that you get, you kind of learn how you do, you have to do a lot of pre-work in order to keep a reptile healthy. Setup set up, set up. Take for instance chameleons, you know, karma here. A lot of people will tell me like, I would love to keep a chameleon, but they're just so much work and they're so fragile. The truth is it's all about the setup, right? What we have here is a screen cage, which is important because they don't like to see the reflection because if they see a reflection, they think it's another male and they get dominant and can stress them out, right? They also like the airflow. You also want a misting system or a drip system because a lot of times these guys don't drink from water cups. So they have to actually drink either from off the leaves or a dripper or something like that, sometimes a combination of both. And then lots of vines, lots of plants, different size vines and plants so that their legs go. So it's about setup. If you set this up properly, chameleons are actually one of the easier animals to take care of. You know, karma and all our chameleons are so easy, it's not even funny. And they completely thrive. Look at how beautiful he looks. Another reptile that set up is everything is a bearded dragon, just like flaming hot cheeto right here. And basically you want a lot of terracing, you want climbing, you know, you want to make sure that you have everything that in that sense, but also they need UVB light and they also need a hot spot right here. This hot spot's about 110 degrees right here, but the cool side's about 82 degrees. So once you have the actual setup perfect, 
super easy to take care of. But if for some reason you don't have the right hotspot, you don't have UVB, maybe they're gonna get what they call metabolic bone disease, you're not giving them the right kind of nutrients and stuff like that, all those things go back to setup. If you have the proper setup, you are in good shape because if you don't have the proper setup with a bearded dragon like this, even if you're giving them the right nutrients, they're not metabolizing them properly and they can actually do poorly. So the downside to bearded dragons, one of the best pet lizards in the world in my opinion, the only downside is, is that the setup is a little bit more expensive and a little more intensive because it's got that high heat and it's got UVB. Now another option if you don't want to spend the money up front and you still want a cool lizard would certainly be a leopard gecko. Now leopard geckos are definitely a much easier animal to take care of, don't need as extensive of a setup. Of course this is little Snow, little Mac here, love him to death and basically it's a very similar setup to a bearded dragon but you don't need that high heat because really they need about an upper 80s hot spot cool side about 80 degrees something like that they don't necessarily need uv light we do give them uv light just because why not and if you can it's always good to give them uv light if you want but they are nocturnal so they spend the majority of their time in caves where they're from so they don't need the uv as much but again if you can definitely always offer uv because it's not going to hurt them to have it but nevertheless the cage setup is actually much easier than a bearded dragon and typically a lot cheaper and they're just a little bit easier animal to care for overall in all honesty so again it's just about setup in the beginning. Now the same thing goes with snakes and all the other reptiles. Do your research, make sure the setup is impeccable and when you have that setup, again you got to remember you don't have to invest in it again, it's just a one-time investment and once you have the perfect setup your reptile is going to thrive so much better. Guys, can you do me a favor? We're actually 80,000 subscribers away from 3 million subscribers here on YouTube. That is an amazing thing, and I don't typically beg for subscribers, and I'm not now. I'm just saying, if you haven't subscribed, can you do me a favor and hit that subscription button, pass it along to other people. 80,000 may seem like a lot, but we can get there in a month or two if we really work hard at it, so it would be amazing. I mean, think about that, 3 million people. That is amazing, and I am so humbled by all of your support, so do me a favor, hit that subscription button. Moving on to point number four. Snakes like bread loaf here, the Dumeril's boa, are going to live a long time, right? You know, so reptiles as a whole, most of them live a long time. Now, snakes can live anywhere from 12 years on the short end with some colubrids, all the way up to 40, 45 years. And an animal like bread loaf here typically is going to live between 25 and 35 years. That's a pretty big commitment when it comes to snakes. But of course, if you get into turtles and tortoises, it's a whole nother story. Now, turtles will live a pretty long time. I mean, some can live 40, and in 50 years. Tortoises can live up to 200 years. Now, I'm not expecting you to live 200 years. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm gonna be living 200 years, but I don't expect most people to do that. So the fact is, is you gotta think about it, probably the rest of your life, you're gonna be taking care of that tortoise and eventually passing it down to your kids, your grandkids, your great grandkids. The turtles don't live quite as long as that, but still a very long-term commitment. You've gotta be ready for that commitment because we see it all the time, where someone gets an animal and then calls us up and says, hey, I've had this for three years, I just don't want anymore and that's not good for the animals it's not good for anyone so make sure before you get into reptiles you're ready to make that long-term commitment point number five would be buy from a reputable source you know and listen I'm not going to be one to tell you to not buy from any source just make sure that they're reputable and they take care of things there's a lot of hate that goes around with Petco and PetSmart for instance but the truth is there's a lot of great employees at Petco and PetSmart so it's not really about the entire chain that's bad if you go to a Petco or a PetSmart that has someone that really cares for the reptiles and they're really amazing, they can be a great source. Of course, mom and pop pet shops are the same way. They typically really take care of their animals well. And of course, breeders are a great option too because they know everything about it. So just make sure you do your research. Make sure you know that you're getting an animal that's gonna be healthy because one of the problems with, with reptiles is they do hide their illnesses a lot. You know, They're not like a dog or a cat when you pick them up and they've got mange or they're, they're skinny or whatever the case may be. A lot of times reptiles look completely fine but aren't healthy. So you've got to make sure you're getting them from someone that not only is going to sell you an amazing animal, but is also going to stand behind that animal in the future so that if you have a problem, you can go back to them and solve that issue. On to number six, and this is kind of a unique one in my opinion, and I'm not saying you have to do this, but 
it is a hobby that you can make money at. You know, the majority of hobbies, even the hobbies that I get into, uh, just cost me money, right? I don't make money from them. But you know, uh, with reptiles, you could actually breed them if you so choose and sell the babies. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, that's how BHB grew. That's how the Reptarium was born. That's how all this stuff was, was us making money, breeding and selling reptiles, which is crazy, which was just a hobby for me at one point. And the hobby turned into a profitable hobby and ultimately into a business. And again, most hobbies aren't that way. And I'm not saying that when you get into reptiles, that should be your aspiration. I'm just saying that it's a possibility because a lot of hobbies, you aren't going to be able to do that. And it's just cool. And it's a fun experience too, right? You know, breeding snakes and hatching babies or breeding reptiles and hatching babies is just so much fun. Don't get me wrong. I mean, people do it with dogs and cats too, but you know, I, I don't think that I ever want to breed a dog or a cat because it's a lot of work. It's a tremendous amount of work. Not saying reptiles aren't work, but they're a lot less work than dogs or cats. And again, you can produce you know multiple clutches where you're not going to produce you know five litters of puppies a year and if you do you're probably going to be out of your mind the fact is is that reptiles are an interesting way to have a little side hustle and make a few extra bucks on the side whether you want to buy more animals or uh, maybe go on a vacation or whatever the case is it's a pretty unique thing to reptiles and then the last thing is a point and a little bit of a caution to you and that is is that it's very difficult to buy one reptile. I'm not gonna lie to you, they're like potato chips. You're gonna have a problem, you're gonna buy one, and then you're gonna buy five, and then next thing you know, you're gonna have a whole bedroom. <laughs> I can't tell you how many people that come into the reptile and be like, I was so afraid of snakes, I came across your videos, and now I have five ball pythons, or whatever the case may be. And you know, ball pythons are a great example of this, of course, is a camo ball python, which is a super chocolate pinstripe ball python. And a lot of times what happens is you might get an animal like that, and then you start looking online you start going oh my gosh there's some beautiful snakes out there and this is a leopard lesser clown ball python so now you're like oh I've got a camo now I need a lesser leopard clown ball python or the thousands of other morphs that are out there that make them so absolutely incredible and they're so beautiful that uh, look at this this is a pastel banana camo ball python again it's really difficult to just own one reptile you fall in love with them there's so many opportunities to keep again whether it's lizard or frogs or turtles or, or snakes, whatever the case is, it is almost impossible to just keep one. As a matter of fact, I'll be honest with you, I know maybe one or two people that have one reptile every other person I know keeps multiple reptiles. So that's a little word of caution to you. When you get into this, expect the fact that it's gonna become an addiction and you are gonna have multiple reptiles. But in that way, I think it's absolutely amazing. And here's a little bonus tip for you guys. If you get into reptiles, your happiness level is gonna go up. That's right, you're gonna be happier in life at least I think that anyways. So I think that is the seven steps that uh, you need to know before you get into reptiles or if you're into reptiles and you wanna keep going or whatever. So pass it along to friends. I appreciate you guys so much if you enjoyed this video. We are not too far away from eggs. Well, we're a little bit of waves, waves. But if you're getting that point where you're missing eggs, uh, here's a playlist. You can look at all kinds of snake eggs. Up here, you can subscribe to my podcast channel. Please do that for me. On this side, I hope that you're subscribed to this channel. Like I said, let's get to three million together. I appreciate you guys. Have an absolutely wonderful wonderful day. Remember, be kind to someone and I promise I'll see you tomorrow.